right. So listen, I am super, super excited to be here today with you both. Not only do I absolutely adore having conversations with dynamic leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about how they are not only making changes in the world, but consciously growing through impact, which is going to be our conversation today. But I am here with the co-founders of Kahila and Listen. They are providing equitable access to the transformative power for leadership development. And I am super grateful that you both took the time out to join me here today. So how are you ladies? So good. We're so good. And thank you for having us today, Alicia. It's Absolutely. Excellent. Funny story. You are actually the first. Yes, you are the first interviewees on the Got Value podcast. So I just want to say thank you both. Now, I adore listening to people introduce themselves because I truly believe that words have power. So I'd love for you to introduce yourself so that we can get to know a little bit more about who each of you are. Do you want to go first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll go first. Um, thanks for <laughs> that. <laughs> <night>. <laughs> um, so my name is Noah Reese. I was born in Israel and um, moved to Australia when I was four. I grew up in Australia, lived in Singapore for a few years, back to Australia and moved to Los Angeles. And now I live kind of in the middle of nowhere in the mountains in Sun Valley, Idaho. Um, and all that's to say is, you know, I've um, been the new girl in town many times. I've had to reinvent myself and redefine and reestablish myself. Um, and in that process, figure out who I want to be um, in each of those new chapters, which I think is a really empowering process to go through. Yeah. Uh, I would describe myself as fully flawsome. So. I am full of flaws, but I, I sort of think it's imperfectly perfect. It's um, awesome and flawed at the same time. So yeah. flawed. Yeah. I love that. I cannot, I cannot sing, but I love to sing. <laughs> That's, <a perfect> example. <laughs> That's most of us. It's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> she sings passionately. <laughs> All yes. I can buzz out a song, Lyrical Theater, at any mm -hmm. I feel like that's what I did in my past life, Lyrical Theater. I'm definitely going to have to see you do that one day. It's now on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah. I am privileged to see it often as the co-founder of Kahila and working in the same office as Noah. So I am Kim Havens, and my journey, I'm a Jersey girl. That's where I grew up. Went to school. Um, school back east, but then ultimately ended up in California for most of my sort of professional career, adult life, yeah. and then met Noah when I got here in Sun Valley, Idaho, this beautiful location. And my background has always just been, you know, seeking adventure and really pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, really kind of you love doing that. I love doing that, whether it's physical or mental, new, just testing new things, putting myself with new people where I'm like, this is a little uncomfortable. I'm going to breathe deeply through this and, you know, thinking about what I learned from that on the other side and how I can grow. Um, and so we found ourselves both arriving around the same time here and um, meeting up because we have our eldest daughters are in kindergarten. That's how we sort of met. That is amazing. I love women who can be powerful, amazing, flossom um, in their separate respective rights and still understand the immense value that comes when those two, you know, operating, fully operational parts come together. It is truly beautiful what you can create, which is evident in all the awards <laughs> that you've won thus far for what you both have created. And so for me, it is a true testament to what happens when women come together to support and build something that would impact others, right? Like Absolutely. there's something that is beyond. It's magical. It's magical. Yes, it is literally, it's, it's magic and it's magical to do it. And of course, like we were speaking earlier, it is not easy. Like it, it, the girl no. things are real. The growing pains are absolutely real, but it is still something that is so magical, especially when it comes to 
because a lot of what you do has to deal with helping people transform. But in order to transform, you have to have a good idea of where you are and then where you want to be. And so for me, I like to define value as the skills that come easiest to you, not your values, but the value, what people pay for, uh, what people will promote you because you're good at. I equate value to skills. And so what do you believe in this process with you both building out an award-winning e-learning platform? Like, what do you believe has been like the greatest value in each of you that has been super unique or that is super unique to your respective roles? Yeah, so you go first. Okay, I will start this one. <laughs> so I would say it's a combination of things that obviously make all of us who we are make us unique. And so for me, it would be really combining that growth mindset. I said of like adventure. I'm very curious and I like to put myself in these situations that are a little bit uncomfortable where I can grow. Mm -hmm. Growth mindset combined with um both an analytical mind, so I will sort of assess what's happening around me very yes. quickly. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> what am I, you know, what's what's the landscape, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And then combined with that is this calmness. And so um people often did like things can be literally, you know, exploding around me. And like <laughs> actually one of my like mo that's when I get into the zone. So even yeah, when the pandemic sense. hit and it was like, oh, what are we gonna do with our business? Right. Everybody felt that. And I was like, <sighs> Let's just give me like get we're we're fine. We can work like yeah, here's like the things. This is what we're doing. If you ever want so. to be like lost in the wilderness, <laughs> have him with you because this gal is calm under pressure, cool Ooh. as a cucumber. Yeah, she should be a CIA agent, like <laughs> in in a war zone somewhere. Oh wait, <laughs> I was I was interested in that as a child. Yeah. So it probably could have been. Wow. Yeah. But, but that's a real skill to be able yeah. to be calm. It's that's a you have an intense control over your mind mm -hmm. because you get to adjust perception to whatever you want it to be. That is a real skill. Absolutely. Yes. It can I can it can make me quite serious sometimes. So that <laughs> that's okay. Wow. It's necessary <laughs> and needed because the only constant is change. So to be able to be uh, to ride the wave without spazzing out, I'm still learning how to do that <laughs> without spazzing out because things are like everywhere. It's yeah. a gift. Totally. Totally. And I think, yeah, it's um, you said about change. You know, we definitely believe it do if it doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change you. Ooh, yes. That is tweetable. No. That's <laughs> cool. That tweet that. No. That's good. I love it. Um, but yeah, so, no. you know, for me, I um, I think about kind of the Venn diagram of my values, my interests, and my abilities. And at that kind of intersection is the things that I have kind of realized, so this is actually valuable that people would pay for because it's when I'm truly in my zone. Yeah. And for me, it's um, I love to get to know people. So it's really connecting with people, building relationships of trust building community, building um, connections is something that um, I think is my true value. And, and then also um, ideating strategically. So, you know, give me a problem and I light up. I'm like, oh, we could do this. We could do this. And so I'm constantly ideating and problem solving, yeah. um, which I guess is the good combo of the two of us of, she ideates and I'll be like, all right, here's all the things. This is the pros. These are the cons. This is like, you know, we kind of like hash through and we see a full 360 yeah. because we, we have really different minds. So it's a, it's a great way to bring both of our unique um, value propositions to the table to run a business. I love it. Like, okay, this is the ideation part. Now here's the analytics part. This is how we're going to actually take it from your head to our hands and mm -hmm. then out into those who we need to serve. And so that is a skill like that's that's like our intrinsic skills, you know, they're honed and developed. Uh, what's the quote? Um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So in my opinion, I believe like, OK, our value is something that, yes, is intrinsic to us. It's something that comes easy to us, but you still have to like hone it and develop it. Right. And so, of course, since you have, you know, an e-learning platform and that is one of your focuses, like how have you been developing? 
your value and your intrinsic skills throughout the years? You know, I think part of it is um, is also it comes over time. It, it, it's developing confidence. You know, it's actually I am good at this, and this is valuable. And being able to listen to yourself and stand in your true power. Yeah. And I don't think there's any way through the tunnel. There's no shortcuts. You just have it's time. You know, it's um, the other thing is really. Um, you know, it's a combination of grit and grace. So you have to obviously be committed to working hard, mm -hmm. but it's also doing what feels graceful. So it's, you know, rather than shoving square pegs into round, whatever, the other kind of, <laughs> I always model totally it. square pegs into round holes, um, you know, feel what feels graceful and do that again and again and again. And it's not, you know, just gritting through something for the sake of it. It's yeah. gritting and hard work through something that feels graceful. Yeah. Mm. And we talk about that idea of the zone of genius, right? Like where are we in flow? And really, again, you got to get tapped into what motivates you, what mm. you're good at, why you're doing it. And really, um, it's, it's great. You got, especially as you're younger, you got to kind of survey the whole scene. What are my strengths? Mm. What are my weaknesses? Right. But ultimately leaning more, I mean, all the research out leaning more into your strengths rather than trying to improve your weaknesses actually does make you stronger and then you'll get I into agree. that zone, right so yeah, being graceful um i think like constantly being curious and again as every yeah. year we get older and more knowledgeable yeah. um but we both else. have plenty of jobs in our careers where we were doing yeah. shitty tasks and oh, yeah. shitty jobs you know and you there's, no, there's no way through that though because that also helps you identify mm -hmm. okay i'm really not very good at this and i really <laughs> don't enjoy it i'm gonna not do that anymore or, as my career experience. or that issue which i know a lot of people fall into of like i'm really competent i'm, I'm okay at i i can yeah. do it but i actually and i but i hate it and people keep asking mm -hmm. me to do this thing but i don't like it and so mm -hmm. you know but you gotta be self-aware like oh what do i like what don't i like so you yes. can realize like oh just because i'm good at it doesn't mean i should do it that doesn't exactly it doesn't make me, doesn't make me excellent you know it doesn't mm -hmm. make me um, the other thing we talk a lot about is, and we give to each other and we like look around us is for feedback, you know, yes. want, I, that external feedback as well as being so internal. Yeah. yeah. And you said something too, that I feel is one of the most important things that you can be as a human, which is curious because that curiosity, it allows you to discover things and it's okay to decide that you don't like something. Um, there is a book, uh, Ask and It Is Given by Esther and Sam Hicks. And I, I believe it's in like chapter 22 or 23 um, where they were talking and they were saying, knowing what you don't want is actually the perfect position to be in because then you get to get real curious about what you do want. Totally. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to have a shitty job because yeah. you can think, hmm, this is definitely not it. So yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's any bad job experience. It's an experience, and you learn whether you hated it or you loved it or was yeah. meh, you know. And I on. think approaching everything with curiosity, then you know, if it's a yeah. uh, uh, this is a meh job, then you can be curious. Okay, well, what's a you know above meh? And you know, <laughs> uh, for feedback with curiosity, how can I get even better at this thing that I love doing? This, yeah. If you're approaching it with curiosity, it takes the ego out, it takes the emotion out, and that's yep. how you develop your value. Absolutely. And you just said another thing, and I know we've got like all the questions, but it's the gems. I love, I, this is why I love conversation, because you oh, learn cool. so much. But you were saying the, how, what does meh feel like? And that's honestly, that's getting in tune with your body. Because too many of us, we're like, well, you know, I went to this college, I graduated with this degree, this is the job that I'm expected to go into, or this is the role I'm expected to fill, and I thought I wanted it, but it's really, it wasn't truly what I wanted, it was the expectation, right, from someone else that Living I felt like. Life with shoulds, of like, you should, should do this. Yes. We meet women all the time, and then honestly, that just follow what, oh, this was the path that was laid for me and path. that people expect me to take. And it's hard. All, like It is hard for people to break from what everyone has told them they should do. You know, the yeah. other thing that I think is a bit of a, 
kind of ugly secret nobody talks about is that so many of us just tell ourselves, I don't deserve more than meh. Oh. And so we've kind of stuffed down this, I'm not allowed to go after more than meh. Yeah. I don't deserve more than meh for whatever reason that may mm -hmm. be. Or yeah. on the flip side, I need to blow up my life to go find that thing and you know light my heart on fire when it's actually part of it comes back to being curious of, okay, well, maybe it's the, you know, corporate job gives me job security. I can send my kids to college. I can put food on the table. And that security enables me to go get this soul enriching passion that I get to do on the side. I don't yes. need to blow my life up to go searching for the thing that sets my soul on fire. It's just being self-aware and curious. Yeah. And it's, it's allowing yourself to want what you want. Yeah. Yes. And not hide those dreams. Yeah, not to hide it or not to be afraid of it or not to, you know, like, well, people won't understand. No, Listen, they are not the ones who are going to be living the life. You have to deal with the consequences, good or bad, because I don't consider consequences as purely negative. But every choice, you have to deal with the results of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you don't want it to be that you are 10 years into a career and it's totally fine to change. Like, oh my goodness, I've changed so many times in my, in my yeah. short lifetime here. It's okay to change, but it is not okay to do the things that you should do when it's not really what you want to do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and again, cool. we meet people who, we like to talk about that, getting your driver's seat, getting into the driver's seat. They sort of just get pulled along, along on that path and then they wake yeah. up passengers in their yeah. lives. And they wake up 15 years later and go, hmm, I'm not so happy. And How did get here? <laughs> right? How did I get here? And they've stuffed it away. And so we really are constantly trying to encourage people, own your choices. Yeah. And and those are fine, but own them. Own them. Don't do not do them by default. Own your choices. Make a choice, right? That's an action oriented yes. thing to do. And yes. you got to tap into who are you. Yeah. Um, and again, it doesn't mean blow up your career. Like you can have side passions. You can have volunteer work. You can have Absolutely. side hustles that satisfy you, whatever that is. But yeah. own your choices. Own choices. Be in the driving yeah. seat. Own your choices. Get out of the passenger. You know, you have the keys. Yeah. Get yeah. out. <laughs> Put it in park. Put the car in park. I don't think they do, but we all do have the keys. It's just absolutely. We find, oh. we have to find them sometimes. Exactly. Sometimes they're in the bottom of your purse. That's yeah, okay. Just clear it out. That it takes a while to find them. <laughs> exactly. Clear it out. Clean it out. We're gonna get in there. Yeah, but exactly. the, the the journey, and it's beautiful that we're talking about this because the journey to discovering your purpose. And I don't think you should only go with what you're passionate about because I am super passionate about swimming, but it would not be wise if I oh Yes. Right. I love lyrical theater. I don't think anyone yeah. would ever pay me yeah. to. And I think that's a great point because it, it scares people on that. Well, first of all, they might not know their passion and that's intimidating, yeah. but if they do, it's not, it's still not always the best idea to follow no. that passion because we aren't always talented in what we're passionate about right and that's okay it's good to acknowledge that one of my um one of my many jobs i think i've like you i've probably had 50 plus jobs my husband's always like how i was like i did that one for a day but anyway <laughs> Didn't work. one of my jobs was a personal trainer because i love exercise i love how exercise makes me feel and i thought oh, i'm just going to do exercise for a living and so the, it gonna just do? pulled the passion out of it for me because all of a sudden it was not, I wasn't doing it for me. And mm. so I realized again, oh, that's something I don't want to do professionally because this is my safe, safe refuge. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you turn it into a business, it's like, oh man, you took all the yeah, fun yeah. out of it. You took all the fun out of it. Exactly. It, it was your escape. It yeah. was, gave you energy. And then they're like, if you're coaching other people, it's a, it's different. And some people do get the passion out of it, but recognizing like, yeah, well, I don't want to do that. It's a profession. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, want to do it. <laughs> that's the best thing. Like discovering your purpose isn't linear. So yeah. then what did, or have you discovered your purpose? And if so, what did yours look like? And then if you haven't discovered it yet, are you still discovering it? I know that curiosity is still going. So what's that been like? Um, so I think it's, 
Uh, well, I will. I won't speak for no, but I do think that we've both probably known our purpose, but been continuing to both like under like pull it out from the weeds yeah. and refine it. Um, mm. So for me, same thing. Lots of different jobs and various things. I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, sell these widgets over here. I don't <laughs> want to write these long papers. Not interesting to me. I it just sort of. But one of the things. Um, that was the big thread through all of it is what I realized is actually this idea of equality and equity um, and women supporting women and holding them up has actually been my purpose. And, and that was sort of the thread that I noticed. I was like, every time I went into something, I was trying to find who are those women who would be peers and mentors and sponsors and how do I help women below me come up. I love that. Um, I love it. Oh, I love that. And what about you, Noah? Yeah, you know, I think um, similarly, if I look back in the rearview mirror, since I'm in the, in the driver's seat of the car, if I look <laughs> in the rearview mirror, you know, it's it's something that's always been there. And again, it's been gaining the confidence to really stand in that power. Yeah. And whilst I know what my purpose is, I'm constantly refining it. We are both so committed to continuous learning, continuous development. And so it's not, first of all, it's not a destination, it's a journey for us. It's very much something that we love the process of fulfilling this purpose. Absolutely. Um, and even though we both had such different careers, we've kind of arrived at the same purpose, which mm -hmm. is seeing equity and seeing all of us live to our full potential. Yeah, And, you know, for after my last um, career, I was a founder of a company and, um, you know, had something not go as I wanted it to. And I was kind of laying on the floor like, I'm done. I'm just going to, you know, go and bake banana bread for the rest of my life. And so, so be it. Uh, you know, I don't get to have any more dreams, basically. Like I used my card and I remember Kim was like, well, what's next? And. It was Kim oh who gave me the audacity to think I get to have a what's next. And then I started mm -hmm. looking, as she said, under the weeds of, oh, what what is what's next for me? And how do I want to do something that feels of service, that lights me up, that I get to stand in my power? And it's a constant growth and development yeah. process. But it, it definitely has been a journey. That is... I believe one of the most powerful things that a friend can do when they see that, hey, I've now come to a fork in the road where I absolutely cannot go back because there is a barricaded wall there with, you know, rabbit pit bulls. Yeah. <laughs> so I cannot go back. Um, I don't see a path forward, but they can ask a simple question of, well, what's next? And not in a pressured way, yeah. but just in a like, hey, not that you're looking for someone to give you permission, but it does feel good when someone gives you permission, like, hey, you can keep dreaming. You get to keep thinking. Like, as long as you're living, there's still more chances. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I agree with that. I've never understood the, like, one day at 65, I'm just going to sit on the couch. I mean, it's one thing if you're gonna, you've got other pursuits, you're gonna, but my goodness, many of us are going to live to our 90s, 100, who knows? I mean, what are you going to do for 50 years, right? Yes. I'm at least living until I'm 85. Like, yeah, yeah. Just, like, there's always something to do and grow and learn. And it's so interesting. And we've both really, so, you know, in this last it. two and a bit years of, um, you know, being shoulder to shoulder with our members in learning and development, yeah. we've both really leaned into this notion that life happens in chapters. And it's, you know, it's this is what's happening in this chapter. Mm. So it, you know, it takes the pressure off. This has to be the thing for the next, you know, however many years. This ha there's no permanence to these things. It's just this constant journey of building your narrative and authoring that next chapter for yourself. And, you know, chapters are all different lengths. So oh, yeah. you don't have to think, oh, gosh, it's five years, it's ten. You, it's okay. Just be present in this moment of what's this next goal you're going towards. Oh, I needed that. 
life <laughs> happens in chapters. That it really just it released some things for yeah. me just now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's it takes so much pressure off the yeah. table because I think, yeah. especially you know, I see a kindred spirit in you. If you're uh, committed to greatness, but part of that, the problem with that is we're also put pressure on ourselves to be perfect, which doesn't yeah. exist. Mm -hmm. So take perfect off the table, and it's just greatness for this season, for this yeah. chapter. And enjoy it. There's something yeah. beautiful about being present mm -hmm. in the moments, or like you said, present in the chapter that you're in, yeah. acknowledging that there will be twists, turns, totally. just like in a regular book chapter. And yeah. you get to ask yourself, what's next? Yeah. Even when that chapter comes to an end, like what's right. next? Yeah, totally. And it will come you to an end. Oh, exactly. You could, uh, there's always a next. And so mm -hmm. you don't have to know what that next is today. Yeah, I like that. There is always a next. So then do you think or do you believe that like your purpose evolves? Like as we evolve, do you think your purpose evolves too? I I do. I, th I think there are people who probably are born knowing exactly what that their purpose <laughs> is, but I don't think that's true for most people. Although maybe again, it's, Was it it's there and it's just, we got to go through the journey to sort of find it. Yeah. Um, but I do think it evolves. It could, it, it evolves, evolves and it expands and, yeah. you know, it expands and contracts. contracts. Yeah, <laughs> it's, um, I feel like it's a bit of a living. Totally. Thing. But like, <laughs> I, I think in saying that we have our North Star yes. and that, you know, mm. the North Star doesn't really change, but how we get there is, yeah. is somewhat organic in shape. Yeah, it's, it's, so purpose, you define purpose as a living organism. Yeah. It changes, yeah. it adjusts. But the North Star is still there. I, yeah. I love that. I love that. You're going to find I love a lot of things. I am love like in human form. So I really do love a lot of things. So prepare yourself. Oh, um, but if you had to, <laughs> thank you. Um, if you had to like uh, sum up like what you believe like your life's mission is in, in one sentence, and I know that might be a little hard. Um, what would it be? If it just one sentence, if you had to, you know, sum up, sum it up. Um, okay, I'll give you one sentence, and then <laughs> the expanded give, version. Then can I give you the why? Because I think oh why is very yes, important. okay, why is of utmost importance. Right. So for me, it's equity in the workplace. Okay, life's mission. I love it. Equity right. in the workplace. And I feel like that's been more defined in the last couple of years since meeting Noah. But when as I look back through my life and when I really think about, well, why? Like, what, why is this keep coming up for me? It's looking at both of my grandmothers. So I have the one grandmother who during World War II went off to work where all the men were, you know, over sees and loved working. She was a very middle class woman, loved working as soon as everybody came home. Her company said, you're a wife and a mother. You may not work here anymore. And her husband said, you may not work anymore. And she was angry the rest of her life. And I would have been pissed too. <laughs> yeah. And she was like born in the wrong generation. So the wrong, you know, class of woman in the wrong generation who just didn't have the freedoms that we have today. Yeah. So that's, I feel like I've always had a great relationship with her. She lived um, to her late 80s. And then my other grandmother was, I didn't know her very well, but her story is of the single working mother, you know, same generation and never remarried her. She had two young children when her husband died and it was a really hard life. And again, like that lack of support and community uh, for her was awful. Yeah. Um, and so just to know that like where they came from and like where we are today and then having two daughters thinking about what it can look like for them. So, yeah, I love it. The why is what keeps you moving when everything says lay down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cause the why helps you get back up. We, yeah. We get on the floor sometimes on those days and then you just remember like, Hey, yes. the, the women before us did not always have these opportunities to make a difference. Yeah. And so let's do yeah. our best. Yeah, it's okay. Get on the floor. Cry it out if you need yeah. to. Wipe your tears <laughs> off. And say, okay, I'm going to get up now. Yeah, totally. It's um, that why is, as you said, it's what gets you out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And so, Noah, what would your your personal life's mission be in one sentence? You know, and it's not too dissimilar from Kim's. It's really to see minorities rise and achieve our full potential. And I say our, um, I am a, a grandchild of Holocaust survivors and um, both of my uh, families on my mom's and my dad's side lost their entire families in the Holocaust. And, um, you know, it's really, I, um, I think a lot about legacy and, um, you know, who my grandparents were. And again, also thinking through of, I have two young daughters and I think it's beholden on all of us to just be better humans. And, you know, that is actually what Kihila yeah. means. Um, Kihila is a Hebrew word and it means a community united by a common goal. And for us, that common goal is a commitment to being better humans. And you know, if all of us just focused on being the best humans we could be, the, my God, the world would be a better place. A much better place, for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. And so, it, again, it goes back to, you know, putting ourselves in the driver's seat of, you know, focusing on making yourself be the best human and at doing that in community means you're not doing that at the compromise of somebody else. It's, you know, very much um, how can I rise up so that others can rise up as well? Yes. Yes. That, that truly is understanding that we all are interconnected if we can understand and come to that as a human, that what I do to this person will affect me down here or over here, or even right now, because we are all connected, I truly do believe we'll make better choices. And no one's perfect, right? We're not, we're not saying be perfect, but we are saying be human. Mm -hmm. Think about how your actions and choices and decisions will affect someone else and do your best to make a better choice. Yeah. It won't always be the best choice, but make a better choice. Yeah. It's um, one of the, the quotes when I was in high school uh, that one of uh, my male professors would always say is he would say, he who gets behind in a race will forever remain behind or run faster. And what he was always explaining, and I would always say, well, she who gets behind in a race <laughs> <laughs> will forever remain behind or run faster too. And we would always, I would always position it and, and rebut him and say, but sometimes you need extra help to run faster. Because I may not know if I am not a professional runner, which I'm absolutely not. Um, if I'm not a professional runner, I may not know what tips or, or what strategies or different ways to elongate my, my running time or, or how I can you know, build up my endurance. So with, you know, Kahila's award, with the award-winning e-learning platform that you have that is built for women by women, which I absolutely love. Anything that is for women and by women has a special place in my heart. Um, you're, you're, you're doing just that. And you both founded the organization combining that content, that community, and also the coaching aspect, which too many people forget is a, is a necessary, you know, needed necessary component. But you've combined that in order to, to, to disrupt the status quo. So how has the vision for the organization changed and grown since your founding? Or has it not changed and it's just been expanding? What's that been like? So the vision, I don't think the vision has changed because it's always been about helping people achieve their full potential. But the, again, the, the journey there has yes. shifted. So when mm -hmm. we first started, we um, were a kind of direct to consumer, a, a B2C company. And we were a hybrid of in-person and um, digital. And okay. we launched with about six events between San Francisco, Sun Valley, Idaho, New York. And then um, in the summer of uh, 2019, we had this event in Sun Valley. And a couple of things happened. One, we had about just under a hundred people show up and we realized, well, we're not really, we can't boil the ocean. We're not really going to be able to make change in the world, you know, a hundred people at a time. Yeah. And we also had um, people asking us for invoices from their, um, so that they could get reimbursed by their corporation. 
Mm -hmm. And we realized, well, we should just go directly to the corporation because we're sort of perpetuating the problem. Yeah. We're widening the gap between the haves and the have-nots where only the haves can afford to pay out-of-pocket to begin with. Mm -hmm. And people shouldn't have to pay out of pocket for their own development because it ultimately improves the bottom line of the company. If Absolutely. their employees are more productive, more innovative, greater sense of well-being. And so we decided to shift to digital and B2B and go directly to corporations. And so that happened right before the pandemic, serendipitously. Um, timing is everything. Timing is everything. Timing, yes. And, you know, we... Um, now work with some of the world's best companies and helping them to really retain and advance the diverse talent that they have. Wow. It's, it's amazing how you, you, because, you know, most of us, we can't predict the future. We can do our best by creating what we want, but most of us can't predict the future. So being able to be in position for what was coming next, doing so out of a I'm going to say servant, but I don't mean it in a derogatory way because mm -hmm. I truly believe that every leader is a servant. Um, but doing so um, with a servant leader heart in that, how can I not continue to be the problem that I say I'm trying to dispel? Like to be able to do that, recognizing that, hey, what we've built and what we've created has merit. It has value. It will change and transform things. But the way we're doing it won't get us to that goal. And being able to shift and move and adjust in a way that was kind of easier, that made even more sense and helped with the bottom line, Absolutely. that is brilliance. And, you know, that came again through curiosity. We're constantly mm -hmm. looking, researching and asking questions. So we had so many conversations with women across the US. And as we dug in, we were, that's when that light bulb went off of, we're perpetuating a problem. This is not okay. And we went back to the drawing board and we, and we really changed our business model and how we work with people um, so that we were not a part of the problem. And you know, you said servant leadership, that is 100% our modality. We are constantly thinking, how can we be of better service to our members, to our customers, to our team. How can we help them, you know, and set up the, the systems and the conditions for success so that they can succeed? Yes. And that's constantly what we're tinkering with. Yes. Well, you are tinkering well, truly. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely tinkering well because you're, you're literally like our values solve problems. And then those solutions become the products that we can sell. Um, and, and studies, and this, these are studies that I know you you ladies have done because you're in the trenches doing it. Um, but there truly isn't a measurable return on investment when companies empower their female employees. Kind of like if you teach a girl to read, you educate an entire community. Same same thing there. So what what do you believe in? You you tapped into it a little bit, but what do you believe are some of the best ways that women can? leverage that learning and development, those learning and development opportunities so that they can excel in their careers. Because many times, I remember when I worked in corporate America, I, there was, I asked one time, and that changed the trajectory of my career, for them to invest in my, in my development by paying for my Scrum Master certification. It is how I you know, became a project manager. It is how I was able to, and mind you, I think I was like 24 when I asked him. I'm like, hey, we're not coming in on time and on budget. If you train me to be a project manager, if you bring in someone to train me, I'll give you three years, you know, I'll stay for three years, but I also want you to then pay for my certification as a scrum master, and then I'll help us come in on time and on budget. Mind you, I had no clue how I was gonna do any of that. That's okay, you figured that out along the way. <laughs> it was a hypothesis that I was putting yeah. out there. You don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. And that absolutely. that is the real thing. So is that how you suggest women, you know, like well, leverage that? Open your mouth and ask? It's part of it. Okay. For sure. So you got to ask. Yeah. Uh, I think you also need to probably a step back from that is set some goals. What, what mm. You know, again, in this chapter, where, what are your goals? What would you like to accomplish? And then how, what's creating that action plan? How am I going to get there? 
So breaking mm. it down to things you can measure and actually do and not be overwhelmed with. Yes. Um, and but once you have that, then you can start to make those acts like, oh, well, I need this. I need help from this person. I need to mm -hmm. go to my manager and say, I want this special training. So I and then explain why you need that and want it. Um, yeah. I think it also goes back to get in the driver's seat. Don't wait to have life happen to you. Make life happen for you. And it's, you know, not waiting to be tapped on the shoulder for the promotion, for the pay raise. Ask for it. Tell them, like, here's all the things that I have accomplished in the last, you know, 12 months in my role. Here's what my role was, what I was hired for. And it's not just showing up and doing your job that's going to get you a promotion. It's way above and beyond. And so, you know, be intentional with going above and beyond. Build relationships. Strategically network horizontally, vertically, laterally, yeah. up, down. Because I think, again, you know, People hire people, people buy from people. And so it's all yes. about, you know, who you know. One of our favorite um, mentors in this community, her name's Pamela Everhart. She always says, A, always be connected. And so I think it's so important to really strategically build relationships of trust and of mutual benefits. So it's not just about, you know, what can I get from you, but it's what can I give you? How can I be of service to you so that, you know, nine months down the line, I can make a withdrawal from the bank that, that yeah. builds trust that I've built with you. I can make a withdrawal. Um, I like that. And you said always be connecting? Connected. Connected. Always be connected. Mm. Yep. And connecting, right? Yes. So you're going to have to continue to grow your network. But you also need to foster those relationships you have um, and make sure they're healthy and strong. Um, and that's in the workplace. You need a community of people to you know, help you get places. And you know, another thing I will say, and this is something I tell my daughters all the time, people are not mind readers. You know, if you have goals, you need to articulate those goals. You cannot expect that somebody just knows you're here, but you actually want to go yeah. over here. People are not mind readers. And so yeah. you know, when my daughters have a squabble and a kerfuffle between the two of them, and it's, you know, okay, well, did you tell her that you were upset she stole your shoes? No. Okay, well, she's not a mind reader. You need to tell her. And I think it's the same thing applies in the place. You have to articulate goal. And I think, so, as, especially as women, if you're in a culture where the, especially if it's predominantly male bosses, have seen many women tap out. Oh, you have kids, you kind of either get stop progressing in your career, you never ask anymore, or you actually quit and you stay at home. You need to be very explicit because you are actually helping to shift the culture. And so you need to tell people, actually, you know, this is what I want. Yeah, I may have had kids. It doesn't actually influence what my, doesn't I, change my, ambition. my, my ambition still here. I went into my boss when I was in my late twenties and said, so I just like to tell you, I'm extremely ambitious and I'd like your job. How, you know, how many, <laughs> what are the skills I need to get there oh, in a year? And he just felt this change. But he really respected it. He was like, I have never heard that because honestly, most women that have kids can and I didn't have children yet. He was like, they just drop out. So are you sure? I mean, he said some really inappropriate things, but um, but in the end, like we, you know, we worked that out. And he um he didn't know. And he he made assumptions about me yeah. because I was a young woman that eventually I would tap out of the workforce. And yeah, knew. and it's it's mind boggling. And here's the thing. I believe every stay at home mom is way stronger than I will ever, ever be. I could mm -hmm. not do their job. I do not want their job. Kudos mm -hmm. to you. Hats off. It yeah. is the hardest job ever. I was home for 12 weeks and I didn't think me and my daughter were going to make it out alive. It was <laughs> so hard. I would look at her some days and I'm like, people really do this like times five and times four and times three. I was just looking at her like, how am I going to make it through? Oh my God. Yes. And so I, I agree with you making it known that I can do, I can do multiple things. I can be a, an amazing mom and a really great parent. And I am also letting you know, 
that this is the career trajectory that I want to have. Yeah. This is by the way like. that people are not mind readers. That also applies at home because if yeah. you mm -hmm. want to have a full career and full personal life, you need to ask for help. You need to yeah. articulate to your whoever is in your support team. Okay, I need you to do this so that I can do this. I yeah. need this. Or or some days it's just I want a hug. Like I'm having yeah. a really hard day. I want a hug. They're not my yeah. 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 And I think there's so much power in just actually one standing in your power and articulating your wants and needs. Yeah. And I, I do love that people aren't mind readers because there is this, there is this uh meme going around where there's this video of a mom and a dad getting ready to leave the house. And the mom is running around all crazy, looking for shoes and socks and getting people dressed and all the things. And the dad just gets himself dressed, goes to the car, sits down and is like wondering, like, why are you guys taking so long? And it's mm -hmm. like, I am not into just, you know, blaming or shaming women, but I am into use your voice to articulate your needs and to be clear about what your requirements are. You can absolutely tell your partner, hey, we've got two children, you do one, I do the other, or if let's say you only have one, I need you to help pack the bag or help fix the meals while I get said person dressed. You shouldn't just take on everything because I am woman, hear me roar, lies. We are humans, oh, oh, we really? need help. Open your mouth, oh, yeah. use your voice box. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. We couldn't agree more with you. It just you need to get nobody's a mind reader. You need to explain what you need, what your objectives are, and you know, what you need help. Or and, you're a partner, especially if you have a partner. You're in a partnership. Let's you know you got to think, talk through yeah. how you handle all of those home family relationship tasks. <laughs> and I think sometimes we tell ourselves, "Oh, just do it." Whether it's yeah. you know the I'm just going to be the one taking notes in the meeting at, at the office or, you know, I'll just do the thing. I, I don't want to, I'm just going to do right. it. And, and they'll, they'll notice they'll, you know, I'll get the gold stars. They'll notice, but they won't notice unless you either ask for help or they'll just assume you're fine with it. Yeah. Because you said nothing. So if you don't say that, Hey, this bothers me or not, you don't have to go from this bothers me. You can just say, Hey, Let's see if we can alternate who takes notes in the meeting because the notes have to be taken. So can we just alternate who takes the notes? And if they say, well, no, then, OK, unfortunately, because I want to ensure that I am producing what we desire, I won't be able to continue to take notes. I'm so sorry. Maybe we can have one of our assistants come in to ensure that they grab all the notes. Don't don't get all, you know, pissy. I'm like, well, I'm just not going to do it. Calm down. Yeah. It's not personal. Sometimes we also have to acknowledge sometimes we make things mean things that they don't mean. You know, I don't have a problem taking notes in the meeting because it means I get to be in control of what is rem remembered in the meeting. So there's that way of looking at it. You know, I think it's, yeah, it's just, again, being in control of the pen in your hand of how, what meaning you make, you give things. Your perspective. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And, and I, so I, go ahead, Kim. I was just going to quickly say, I'm sure there's some people who are thinking, oh, well, you know, it might, it's probably easy for all of you. You seem like extroverts and it's easy for you to speak up. But that was, I'll just say, that was not the case for me as, first of all, I'm not really an extrovert. I'm technically probably more of an introvert or an introvert, but I'm an um, introvert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but I had to learn to use my voice. I was not that outspoken when I was yeah. 20. And so I practiced and that's as again, a kid. or as a child, I probably didn't speak at all. And so I had to, and I had to like push me to use my voice. And I had to do that. And so if it's really uncomfortable for you know anybody listening, it's remember it's, it's a skill to be able to speak up and be confident and, and you it's, but it's really important to make sure that's how you get into the, the driver's seat is you've got to have that confidence and you've got to find your voice. Absolutely. Otherwise, I wouldn't Absolutely. Be there. <laughs> that part, you, you will have to learn how to use your voice. You, you will. Mm -hmm.
And it, it brings me to, to my last question um, in that there's this uh, notion of professional insecurity where you feel insecure, kind of like the whole uh, imposter syndrome. And I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to agree to the definition because sometimes too, when you put a name on something, it might not necessarily be what it truly is for you, but because there's a name on it and because so many people are believing it, you take it into yourself and like, oh yeah, no, this is me. So I'm not sure if I'm a, if I believe in it myself just yet, I'm working through it because I'm a human and I get to work through things at my own pace. But yeah. do you believe that professional insecurity is a thing? And if so, like, how have you dealt with it if you've experienced it? And then how do you help others manage theirs if you believe it's even a thing? A hundred percent, we believe it's a thing. So let's totally. start there. We it's, do. A hundred percent. We both experienced it. We you know, we show up as confident beings, but there are times where we're like, oh my God, how are you going to do this? And you know, it's, we're, we're really lucky. We have a friendship where one of us, one of us will be on the cliff and the other one's talking them back down. We got this. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so Come back. Yeah. So find that buddy who can talk you off the cliff. I yeah. think that's really important because um, it's real. And that the feeling of I need to work you know, all night because my, I, I'm going to like, my boss just expects that again, this goes back to, did you make that up in your head or did, does your boss really expect that? Or did you just create that, you know, story? Or maybe your yeah. boss is writing an email at 11 PM so he can get it off his mind so yes. that he doesn't forget it. That doesn't mean you have to reply at 11 PM. That's yeah. Story. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I, I think, think the story, sometimes the stories that you create, create the insecurities you have. Mm. And sometimes they're probably very valid, but, um, but having the people that you can hash that out with and then reminders to have your personal boundaries and mm. think about what you're good at, right? Go back, going back to that value. What, what do you bring to the table and really be confident and why you got hired, why you're in this role? Um, there was a reason you were hired. Yeah. I also go back to that idea of curiosity of, oh, why am I feeling this yes. way? What What is this? What's coming up here? Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's 11.30 p.m. I'm exhausted and I'm catastrophizing because that <laughs> nothing good ever happens in my mind after 11 p.m. And so now I'm like, okay, it's 11.30. I got to so stop. Down, so <laughs> I'm just going to like give myself tomorrow's a new day and I can put my insecurity away that way. And I can mm. remind myself that what I'm feeling isn't fact. And I can separate mm. the emotion that I'm like spinning. Mm -hmm. It's not fact. And I can just, yeah. okay. And so constantly get curious and see mm. if there's fact in there. And if there's fact, maybe go ask some trusted people for feedback. Yeah. How can I do this better? And then, you know, for other people, it's also shining a mirror up to them and reminding them of what you see in them. You know, we, um, coaching is so important in our culture and often we will see some magic in someone in our team who they, they don't see that in themselves. Yeah. And him and I, very different personalities. We will both say she has something that we need to uncover and so it's holding that mirror up to other people and reminding them of what you see in them yes. and then holding their hand as they kind of go through the fire and go through that growth zone Listen. the other thing that we like to remind everyone and we remind ourselves all the time is why not you why not us why right so say that to yourself why not me when you're feeling insecure and you know especially with these if you have big dreams and goals why not? It could be any of you. Know? Yeah. Why not me? Yeah. Why does it have to be over there? Why not me? I love it. Yeah. Why not me? Yeah. I think we all should ask ourselves that. Like, yeah. why not me? Why yeah. can't I be the person who gets the promotion or the person who learns this really, really tough, you know, coding oh. language? I mean, not me, but, you know, for other people, yeah. why not? Yeah, why totally. Not? If it's what you want, like why? And just because you can't see it does not mean you can't be it. And so, yeah. you know, I think for many of us, we did not have um, 
role models of women who were trying to juggle personal and professional and we think oh it's too hard I'm just not even going to try it's too hard to have a big professional dream and show up as a good mother at the same time but just because you can't see it doesn't mean you can't be it and so why not do oh so what else is the way yeah that part we are going to drop the mic right there it Mm -hmm. was this conversation was so 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 good thank you thank you so much just really quick where can we stay connected with you follow you do all the things you can follow us on linkedin that is where um we both are most prominently and then www.kahila.com Funnily enough, most um, auto captions call it tequila, but that is not that. It is, <laughs> it's dot com. Ah, yes. This conversation was absolutely phenomenal. You can stay connected with me everywhere, Alicia Reese, or the website rglpgroup.com. Again, I thank you both for your time, for your energy, and for sharing space. I do not take it for granted. Um, And I'm super grateful for, for both of you joining me. So until next time on the Got Value podcast, and we will see you guys soon. Thanks so much for having us. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Got Value podcast. Remember, there is true value and purpose. And the greatest discovery of your life will be exactly what yours is. Stay connected with us at gotvalunation.com.